Hi there, I'm Catherine. I have a flip through today of a journal that I finally finished and I thought you might enjoy taking a look through with me. Oh, there's still some threads here. I've tied it shut with some sari silk because she's she's really kind of chubby. <laughs> I've filled her with all kinds of lacy fun ribbony things as you can see here so uh, i thought let's do a tour together and you can see what i've done uh, let's take a look at her size she is about five inches by uh, about seven and a half inches and she is mm, not quite one and three quarter inches thick spine. Let's undo this. I believe she's got eight signatures, but I'm going to take a peek and just make sure. So let's put this aside for now. Uh, as you can see, it needs the sorry silk. I kind of went... I, I kind of went a little crazy, and which is unusual for me. I usually tend to lean towards uh, leaving my journals a little nearly naked. And uh, I had fun this time. So uh, let's just start from the back. <laughs> I'm going to send along some extra pages that were left over from the book. And as well, of course... Uh, it needs to have a two nanas bookmark to go with it so that will be going along and this book was published in 1893 hold on this will be holding it together this reminds me I'm going to go through my usual spiel uh I try my best to make my junk journals completely from repurposed sources uh, whenever possible. Once in a while there will be some brand new things in it. For example, the glue is always new, threads for sewing are new. This bulldog clip looks old, it is actually new. These are really hard to find secondhand in that cute little size and I just love them. So I figure if everything else has been repurposed I can treat myself and you to the occasional little new thing in there. And uh, I've put a few things back in that were in the book. For example, this, this was the original dedication inside. The book was owned, was a gift, a prize awarded to a young lady named Bessie Jollo. And she lived here actually in the town where I live. And she won this uh, book as an award in 1895, it says here. And this was written inside the um, end papers. And I kept trying to think of what I wanted to make with this. And I just, I kept having a stupor of thought. And to me, a stupor of thought means leave it be. It's meant for the new owner to to have fun with. So I'm going to send that along um, so that you can do as you wish and make something wonderful out of this. Maybe you just want to fold it and tuck it into one of the many pockets that you're going to find in here. There were quite a few uh, very pretty little illustrations inside. I used some and I've sent along uh, the rest. So, and a few pages to uh, make, um, you know, the usual journaly things. Journaling cards and tags and that sort of thing. So, let's just put these aside for now. This will be going along with, uh, I've been calling her Bessie Maud because that actually was her full name. Bessie Maud Jollo. 
and uh, her father was Louis Jollo, and uh, her mother was, um, I think her name was Jewel. I'll have to find that out again. Her mother died when she was young and her father remarried. So let's get on with uh, what I did with this book. So it actually is uh, a book of poems by Longfellow. And I've had it for a while and it was literally falling apart. The top part of the spine was crumbling away to nothing. The bottom wasn't so bad. So I simply reinforced the top with some old lace and uh, I added a little bit of uh, a little sort of cameo of needlepoint down here that I received in Happy Mail. Now you're going to see some splits along the hinges here. Those have been reinforced from the inside out, so don't let those scare you. I think they add to the character of the book and uh, I didn't want to do anything else with this cover. It's so pretty. There's just very pale shades of pinks and greens and golds. And um, I just, I thought it was so pretty the way it was. So I left it alone. So yes, you'll see these little splits here, but when we get inside, you're going to see that it's all been reinforced with fabric. Uh, two layers of fabric. There's muslin underneath and then there's some cotton fabric here that was used to uh, suspend the text block in there because I have put in a hidden hollow back spine and yes there are eight signatures in there and I believe there are um, 240 pages but it actually could possibly be 238 pages because one of these pages is um, I glued it in the way you would glue a plate in is it this one yes it's this one so this page was an extra one that I glued in along here because this was uh, the original first page and I believe in here yes is where you will see that it actually was published oh hold on in 1893 let me make sure that's clear 1893 so this is a very very old book I thought I'd have a little bit of fun, make a little bit of mystery in the book. This is an actual uh, part of a page from an antique um, carte de visite um, card uh, album that I had the pages from. They were actually four per page and I have been just cutting them up and using them as pockets. So this one actually says family on it. I've made it a little thicker to fit in this faux carte de visite that I made. And there's a mystery man on there. He's actually, uh, if I seem to recall, that's actually Edith Holden's father. Uh, very handsome man, Arthur Holden. And I've put a little Victorian um, little piece of ephemera there that says, Believe my love is sincere. And then the back you can journal on. And uh, I just put a little, a little tag there. And you'll see through the window I used some of the original... Um, end papers back inside and you can put something else inside there you don't always have to leave in uh, things that I put into pockets once this book becomes yours you can flip things around pull them out put your own in it's your book to do as you wish so uh, let's go back here just for a second so you'll see there's the lace that I've used to reinforce this. Uh, it was a crumbling top of the spine. There's also a little detail of a little more lace in there. And then I have put in a permanent uh, ribbon bookmark there. Because when you've got this many pages, I think you need a ribbon bookmark to uh, remember where you last left off. 
So wherever possible, I have put some of the original pages back into the book. They were in quite nice condition. Sometimes these old books, actually the papers were very good quality. And I've sort of kept a, um, maybe a spinster kind of theme still in it. Uh, because Bessie never ever married. She lived with her sister who was also a, a spinster. She did have other siblings. She had some siblings with uh, through her, her mother and then when her father remarried he had some more children and she had some half-siblings and they all seemed to live here in uh, my town. And so I incorporated a few little things in that sort of feel local to me but I still think make it kind of charming. So you're going to see a lot of laces <laughs> along the edges. I had fun with uh, had fun with the lace and ribbons and sewing. Well, you're going to see and still left lots of room for you to journal. Uh, some pretty uh, stationery and tea dyed paper. This is from an actual antique um, autograph book that was sent to me in happy mail from my crafty crush and I believe the oldest date on the signature here on the other side says 1885 and the person who owned this little autograph book actually lived in the same area where um, the Ingalls lived so and as you can see I like a variety of shapes and sizes in the pages that I put into my books. I made use of lots of happy mail in here. This is a spread that was out of a book, um, a Victorian type reprint book, but I fussy cut around it and turned these into pockets that I thought maybe a fashionable young lady might like in her journal. So those are pockets and these tags um, I made using um, a collage method that I played around with from Marguerite Miller and Wishes and Weeds. I did a little, a little stenciling there and some tea dyed paper so you can journal on the back of that. There we go, 1885 on that one. More lace and ribbons and sewn on. I've left the threads long, but they have been knotted. You can trim them if you don't like long threads. This flips out. I've used some faux uh, cellophane tape. I imagined maybe Bessie liked the uh, article here and wanted to save it and how would she do it? Well she might use some newfangled cellophane tape. Some more uh, stationery that has it's embossed so it's really pretty. Some paper that was sent to me in Happy Mail and this page also came out of a booklet that was sent to me in Happy Mail. Isn't this beautiful? It's, uh, what year was it? Did I write it down? I don't think there was a year on this. It was from a book of sermons from Mr. Brooks. I needed to uh, fortify that fold, so again I used faux cellophane tape. I like the way that turned out. A little tuck spot here from a lady I'd been saving for a while. Now this is a something, it's a rare thing for in a journal that I create. This is a digital print, but it was for a good cause. My friend Nancy over at Wishes and Weeds was raising money uh, for a, a homeless group in her town. And uh, so she was on her buy me a coffee page. It was actually to buy them tents and supplies and you could uh, download that JPEG. So, uh, so I did. So I figure that counts because it was for a very good cause. She did a lot of good work with that money. 
I was able to find Bessie's uh, birth registration. So uh, because it's from 1877, she was born January 24th, 1877, um, it was uh, printable. And I made it look old, and you can journal on the back. And that way you have a little... Um, you have a little reminder. Oh, so her mother's name, her father, Louis Jollo. Oh, Jewel. That's why the name Jewel. I was thinking, no, it's not Jewel Jollo. Uh, her name was Lydia Jewel. So Jewel was her maiden name. And you can see here that Dr. Booth delivered her in the little town where I live. And uh, so I just, uh, reward of merit. I figured she won the, this book. Uh, because she memorized uh, apparently a very long piece of uh, uh, something for her Sunday school class for our St. Paul's Church, which still stands here in our little town. Some music from 1894, a hymnal from 1894. This is a reprint from a Sears Roebuck catalog. And this is vintage um, ledger paper that came in Happy Mail. This spread uh, came from a book on tea. And I thought, well, I bet they enjoyed many a pot of tea. And it's also tuck spots. I created another, um, what I thought looked like a nice um, photo. This is actually an, an opera singer. And now I can't recall her name. But you can journal on the back and she fits in there if you like to leave her there and another little card that we made look old even though it looked rather new when I found it at my thrift store it um, now it looks old and I've just tucked that in there like that and this also um, I believe she was also an opera singer this book was uh, from 1908 a little tucks, a little flip out, pardon me. And some, I figured hymn book, hymns were appropriate since she won the book from her Sunday school class. She worked at uh, the Goodyear plant that was a very big employer here in our town for many, many years. So I thought this was appropriate. It came from a book on business writing, and it, that book was printed in 1895, which I've written down here in pencil so that you know that this page is from 1895. A little tab here that can hold things on either side and it's just two ladies working in a factory and I wondered if maybe that was uh, Bessie and her sister Ella and then I just put a, a little eyelet there and some some uh, embroidery floss with a little bead that is a gold rose just to dangle on there this is just a little blank card, vintage card, and uh, I've left it as is. I've sewn it into the signature. You can glue the bottom and those become pockets, or else you can carefully cut open the tops, and then that gives you extra pages for journaling on. Leave that up to you. Again, more uh, lace sewn on. A little tuck spot here. And I've put in um, a flower a card that goes when you receive flowers that we aged and made it look old, even though it wasn't old. Maybe, maybe you can write a little love note from maybe she had a bow, I was thinking. But I left it blank for you to use. More illustrations from the original text block. This is a reprint of a postcard, but again, I, I imagine that maybe she um, 
Maybe she had a gentleman collar or two. This uh, is some of the famous lace tea dyeing from uh, Nancy at Wishes and Weeds. And I imagined that maybe she was making plans for her wedding and imagining what kind of veil or dress she would wear. This came, I fussy cut this off of a page out of a book I have from 1888 called The Girl's Own Annual. And there was another one, so I made one on both sides. And I had a little extra left over from the end papers. The, one, the other piece I used went behind the... Um, pocket that's inside the front cover. This page came from a book on wildflowers from 1940 and that's written down there. Uh, this is a reprint from a uh, Sears Roebuck catalog. Again another fussy cut from out of the 1888 book and I imagined maybe she had saved a piece of her mother's wedding gown and there's a tiny little, a tiny little locket here that I've pinned on and also put some blue ribbon on. Maybe it was, maybe this locket belonged to her mother and that was the something blue. And if you open it up, there is two little, two little portraits in there, but those are actually relatives of Queen Victoria. <laughs> but I love the way they, the perfect size to go in there. And I love the way that just sort of hangs out over the edge. Now this uh, vintage card um, again has a slight religious tone to it but again she it sounds like she was a very avid um, attendee at St. Paul's Church and what I did here was, yes, it is sewn into the signature, but I only sewed it on the one side so that you can open it up and you could write in the whole thing if you wish. If you don't want to do that, you could run a bead of glue down here and close it up. And that would give you either the ability to make pockets or again, run a knife along there and give yourself extra pages for writing in. More from that wildflower book from the 1940s. This is again, another fussy cut from uh, that 1888 Girls' Own Annual book. And I put in a tea dyed um, index card. It's a tuck spot. When I was first figuring out how to how I was going to fortify the top of this book because it was it was a really ugly mess, but I didn't want to cover up the whole spine. It was so pretty. Um, originally, it had this lace at the top, and uh, I I trust the gut of my crafty crush and she said I don't like that lace up there I think you've got better lace and she was right I like I do like this lace better looks a little daintier but I still wanted to put this lace it was meant to be in here so I glued it onto this little um, place card that's been tea dyed and it's I've just put a paper clip on there and I've put it here. You can put it wherever you want. You can have it sticking out over the top. You could have it um, sticking out the side like a tab. It's quite um, flexible. More ribbons, more lace sewn on. I put in some check registry kind of papers because again, she apparently was a long time employee at, Goodyear, at the Goodyear plant. Um, more uh, music from a hymn book. I figured this 
uh, hymn was called Courage, and maybe when her father passed away, seeing as her mother already had passed away, when her father passed away, she felt like she needed some courage. So, more of that tea dyed. And I finally made use of that um, that seal and the, the punch that I found on Virage Sale. I was so excited to be able to use that. I just think that's really cool. Made a tuck spot out of a card, although the card itself was new. I found it at a thrift store. Um, it looks old and we aged it a little bit more to make it fit in there. And I like how that looks. And there's a tag in there that we collaged together and a bit of a little bit of stenciling on the back, but room for journaling. Oh, hold on. Another page illustration from the original text block. More lace, more more ribbons. See what I mean? It just kept getting chubbier and chubbier on me. Oh, this was that famous um, poem that Longfellow wrote, The Wreck of the Hesperus. Oh, it, um, what a sad, sad poem. I believe the whole thing is in there. If it's not, if I didn't get the whole thing in, and I think I did, look it up. It's, um, that's the one I always think of when I think of poetry by Longfellow. I think of the wreck of the Hesperus. This is just a little movable tab that you can put wherever you like in the book. And it can also stick out the side if you don't want it sticking out the top. It can stick out wherever you like. More tea dyed office paper. With a bit of a tip out. Bullet journal paper left over from one of my bullet journals that I never filled up. See what I mean? 240 or so pages. This is an old uh, half of a needle booklet. Um, it must be from the 40s or 50s. Um, I should look it up. I'm not sure because it did say made in occupied Japan. And then I created um, a journaling card in the style of a carte de, de visite and I imagined that maybe it was these two sisters look like they're in mourning and maybe they were uh, set, setting the house nicely after father had passed away. Again a little stenciling down the sides just a little touch here there. Stationery um, I believe this was out of a, um, oh, her name's gone out of my, it'll come to me. This is, um, a, this is antique, but there's no year on it. I got this at a little shop in Niagara Falls, Canada, and it's the Apostles' Creed. It was in an envelope full of um, religious paraphernalia, the, the prayer cards and such that you gather from visiting churches. And I just thought the flowers along this part matched the little flowers that were on this linen pocket that I sewed, I glued and sewed and, and tucked in there. So that's old, but I don't know how old. Some more of the check register. You can tell it's Canadian by the way check is spelled. I had fun with some uh, repurposing a Rolodex card here to make a pocket. This was on the one of the original interior pages of the book. So I created a little um, envelope and, and tucked some tea dyed paper in there but there there is the man himself Mr. Longfellow so I've just tucked that there and there's a little bit of 
um, collaging there. I put um, it's it's this is from an illustrated dictionary for the part for piano, and it has the keyboard there, because also one of the big employers in our little town, we had uh, the Dominion Piano and Organ Works here in my town that employed a lot of people for many, many years. And the museum in our town has a lot of them on display and they are stunningly beautiful. And the final page I left blank with some lace and ribbons, but I did, must say I did have fun collaging on a tea dyed uh, window envelope. And if you open it up, there is a, a journaling card. And I thought these two young ladies looked like Bessie and her sister uh, off on a lovely day. Um, and that maybe they uh, got a picture of themselves as they were setting out to have fun. Did a little bit of collaging and tucked that in there and, and collaged here. And then it was, it was acting up on me because this was tea dyed the hinge wasn't wanting to hold very well so again I thought well what would Bessie do if say she had glued something in and it wasn't holding very well well maybe yeah she'd pull out some of her cellophane tape and tape that down so that's what I've done there and I think that turned out fun and you can see maybe that's Bessie right there peeking out from that window uh, and again, this is um, the label from a box from Player Piano, uh, a roll, a Player Piano roll. And the Dominion Organ and Piano Company here in town also made Player Pianos. So that's a little tip of the hat um, to them. And then again, uh, my little, my little, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? ex libris kind of thing where with my name my signature and the year I made it right there so so that is um I've been, I've been affectionately calling her Bessie Maud and uh there she is in all her loveliness uh all her pudgy loveliness she's a Renoir woman like me and I think she turned out really really pretty I hope you enjoyed this flip through. She's going to be available in my Etsy shop for sale very soon. Uh, hopefully uh, later today, within uh, within about an hour or so of seeing this, um, she should be available in my shop. Uh, so keep an eye on my shop. If, if you're interested, sometimes you have to... Um, you have to... Uh, Oh boy, I'm, my brain is really searching for words today. Replenish the page because Etsy doesn't do it itself. So sometimes you have to re hit refresh. And um, plus I'll also, um, I'll post a picture and announce it on um, Instagram when she is finally available in my Etsy shop. So thank you again for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this flip through. And... Uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day. Let's just put that sorry silk there. Take care. Bye.